Hey guys, it's Dan. So today we're going to be learning how to texture a cotton shirt. Um, I'll be talking you guys through how we're able to achieve these results with only a few simple steps. This isn't particularly a clean mesh we're going to be working with, but it should be fine for what we're going to do today. I've made a video like this previously, which you can watch, but I'm hoping with this video we can dive a bit deeper and uh, show off a few more tricks. So, enjoy! Okay, let's start this off. So, let's get a fill layer. And we're going to go for blue today, because I like blue. Let's go for about 0.75 for the roughness. And let's add another fill layer now. Right click, we're going to go add bitmap mask. And we're going to look for weave 2. Let's go to the weave 2 parameters. Let's scale that down. So we get a nice, nice pattern. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, the actual base color. And just have height. And we're going to pull that just a bit up so we get those bumps. Nice. Now let's go back to color. Let's add color in now. Let's find a color just above the base color. So now we've got that. This is a little trick I've learned recently. If we go over to the mask and we right click and go to add filter and we add a warp. What we're able to do here is by messing around with the intensity, just adding a teeny bit of a warp to the, to the weave. So the reason why we add the warp um, is just to get a teeny bit of randomness in the weave. Uh, without this, it can feel a bit too perfect. Um, so yeah, it just adds that little bit of realism. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go over to the color again. Let's put the roughness up. Um, just so there's a bit of that roughness displacement now. Go check the roughness. Nice. Okay, so now we've got that, let's add some color displacement. So what we're gonna do first, let's go over to bitmap mask again. We're gonna look up spots one. So Gaussian spots one. We go back over to here to the parameters and we're going to scale that down until it becomes kind of a grunge. Mess around the balance a bit. Let's even go to the noise parameters, scale things in, add a bit of disorder, breaks up the, um, the repetition a bit. Okay, so now we got that. Let's go back to the color and let's find a slightly lighter blue. Just slightly. Nice. So now that we've got that, let's duplicate that with Control D. Let's go back over and we're gonna go for a slightly darker, darker blue now. So around here. So now we've got that, we're gonna go back over to the actual um, Smart Mask. And we're gonna pull down the balance. It's a bit less than the, the lighter color. Okay, so I've messed around with it a bit, slightly bringing down the values just a teeny bit. And now we've got something that's just a subtle bit of color displacement in the, um, in the base color. Nice. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some little balls, little balls of, um, of cloth that can bunch up in clothing. So let's actually get spots again, and we're going to get Gaussian spots. Let's pull that in, pull that in. So now we're going to go to balance, and we're going to turn that right down. There's only a few little speckles. Now we're going to go to noise parameters, just mess around with that a bit. Change the size so it's a bit more random. We don't want it to feel too uh, repetitive. Mess up the disorder, so we get something we like. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go back to color. Let's just turn on height for now. We're gonna get just those little, 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 little spots of uh, cloth that are bunched up. Let's add some color in now. Let's just we can go back to base color. See how that looks. Just a teeny bit. I'm even gonna slightly. It's a bit more repetitive. Actually bring up the balance just a bit. Let's see how that looks. Let's actually bring it all the way up. Okay, so I'm happy with that. It's subtle. Maybe what we can do is even go to the uh, the height. Just slightly bring that down a bit. Just a bit, needs to be subtle, nothing crazy. Okay, so the little final touches to the color, let's add a grunge. So let's go over to grunge. Uh, the best grunge, I'd say, probably the, the grunge dirt splats. I like the grunge dirt splats. So what we're gonna do, just gonna bring that in. Mess around with the balance just a bit. I definitely say adding grunges is half the battle of texturing. 
Um, and you can get some really, really awesome results just by uh, Grunge's Align. So let's now go in and add a slightly darker blue. Let's try and see if we can match the same color. There we go. So it only needs to be subtle. With something like this, we're trying to go for something a bit more realistic. But we don't have to go too overboard. Just that little bit that adds that, that color displacement that really sells the cloth. Awesome. So the final step we're gonna do is we're gonna add some small hairs. So I'm sure any uh, cat or dog owners here uh, will know the pain of, of having little hairs all around their hoodies and jumpers, how it just kind of sticks in between the, the cloth weave. Um, so yeah, we're gonna add that just for that little bit of um, realism and because I like cats. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up scratches. That might seem weird since we're we're looking for um, more of a more of a hair texture, but with something like scratches, we're getting that kind of randomness that we'll need. Um, and this grunge is really good for it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to mess around with it. Let's get like a really, really crazy color so we can see what we're looking at here. Maybe something a bit more. Yeah, there we go. So what we're trying to achieve with this grunge is trying to get those um, little hairs. So with this one, we get that kind of randomness. So what we're gonna do is just pull the, the grunge in a bit, the balance, so we just get that little bit of um, little pieces. Great. Now let's go for a nice, let's do dark, why not? Turn up the roughness, turn up the height. Let's add that on, let's see how that looks. So yeah, we're getting those little, little flakes now. Those little uh, hair flakes. Subtle, but um, definitely help, definitely help. So another really easy way of conveying a realistic look to your clothing is considering how and where the clothing is being worn the most. So usually on the ends of sleeves or at the bottom of jeans, um, that's where most grit or, or wear and tear will take place. So we're gonna have a go at adding that, just for that teeny bit of um, flare. So let's go over, let's add some more spots, my favorite. Let's go get Gaussian spots. Let's turn that all the way down. Nice. And we're going to go back here. Have just the height for now. We're going to get that a bit more grunge. See that? So what we're going to do now, is we're going to go here. And we're going to add, we're going to right click, and we're going to add paint layer. And now what we want to do is we're going to mask out all the parts where we don't want this grunge to take place. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping it mostly to the ends of the sleeves and at the bottom of the shirt. But in just small little places, sometimes I'll keep the grunge just for that bit of displacement. Um, a bit more... But overall, we're clearing most of it up. So I have a teeny bit on the collar. What I can do is erase a bit so we can get a bit of that back. Okay, so this is the final step. I know I've said that like three times now, but this is the final step. So what we're going to be doing is adding one more fill layer and turn off everything but the normal. And we're gonna search up flakes. So here you see flakes, normal flakes. What we'll do is we'll put that on into the normal and it will look a bit rubbish, but what we're gonna do is go to scale, and we're gonna scale that in, scale that right in. So by adding the normal flakes, what we're getting is kind of a distortion and a flakiness to the shadows, um, which gives off quite a nice cottony clothing feel. Um, so what we can do is just go over and turn that down just a teeny bit, maybe to 50%, just so it's subtle. And there, that's looking pretty nice. A little back and forth without it. Looks quite smooth there. But with that on, you get that little bit of flakiness that really sells a kind of cotton feeling. Quite nice, right? Yeah. Okay, for my final step, my final step, I'm sorry, we're gonna be adding 
the slightest gradient to the clothing. And this is definitely artistic choice, but I feel like when adding just that little bit of flair um, to the base color with a gradient, it just helps sell just that, that feeling a bit more. And it also just looks a bit more interesting than something completely flat. So what we can do, add a fill layer, and we're gonna set that all the way to black. I'm gonna right click on that, and add black mask. And what I do is I just dosh in just a bunch of black at the ends of the clothing. Again, this is definitely a stylistic choice, but overall, I think it just helps create much more interesting texturing job. And it looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. So, obviously that looks a bit, a bit rubbish, but what we can do now is get the eraser tool, just dosh that back out, just slightly, nothing crazy. Let's pull that up a bit. So you get this nice, this nice little gradient just subtle. Let's get that in. See how I'm just taking away, taking away slowly. Okay. Now that we've got that, let's go back to the base color and just turn that down until it's very subtle. So see that? So what we, what we can see here is just by adding this this slight bit of gradient. We're getting a bit more of an interest to the base color um, that should overall feel a bit more satisfying on the eye. So now following these steps, we've got a pretty good base. Moving forward, you can add more details, little imperfections, but overall we've got a pretty good start. I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time and I hope this was fun to follow. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always message me or write something in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you soon, I guess, if I do any more videos. I hope so. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.